Good morning and welcome back to Daily Devotions. This is Vicar Brandon in for Pastor Steve. want to wish you a very merry week after Christmas as we're heading into the new year. And we continue to go forth in the book of Exodus, this narrative where God is rescuing his people Israel from slavery in Egypt. We just were talking about how the Israelites were interacting with the golden calf, how they had turned to idolatry and they had turned away from God and some of the consequences of that action there. And then in chapter 33, we continued to talk about this idea of the people being separated from God because of their sin and yet God making a way to connect with them as he does for us through his son, Jesus. And so now we get into chapter 34 as God gives to Moses a new set of tablets uh, of the Ten Commandments. Remember, Moses had thrown them on the ground when he saw the people worshiping the golden calf. And so we're seeing uh, the law written again on these tablets. And so that's where we pick up in verse 1. So chapter 34, starting at verse 1. The Lord said to Moses, Chisel out two stone tablets like the first ones, and I will write on them the words that were on the first tablets, which you broke. Be ready in the morning, and then come up on Mount Sinai. Present yourself to me there on the top of the mountain. No one is to come with you or be seen anywhere on the mountain. Not even the flocks and herds may graze in front of the mountain. Again, getting at this idea of the holiness and majesty of God. So Moses chiseled out two stone tablets like the first ones and went up on Mount Sinai early in the morning as the Lord had commanded him. And he carried the two stone tablets in his hands. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and stood there with him and proclaimed his name, the Lord. And he passed in front of Moses proclaiming, the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands, and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sin of the fathers to the third and fourth generation. And so God placing his name in this situation, he proclaiming his name towards Moses, And it kind of reminds me of how our God does that with us in the waters of baptism, that we're baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God adopts us into his family, and he puts his name upon us, claiming us as his own. And in that act, we see how God is compassionate, how he's gracious, slow to anger, and he forgives us for all our wrongs. And he says here how there is going to be punishment. There is going to be punishment when the people disobey him, but yet, the heart of God, the heart of his character, his proper nature, is love, is grace, is compassion. Verse 8, Moses bowed down to the ground at once and worshipped. O Lord, if I have found favor in your eyes, he said, then let the Lord go with us. Although this is a stiff-necked people, forgive our wickedness and our sin, and take us as your inheritance. Then the Lord said, I am making a covenant with you. Before all your people, I will do wonders never before done in any nation in all the world. The people you live among will see how awesome is the work that I, the Lord, will do for you. Obey what I command you today. I will drive out before you the Amorites, Canaanites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. Be careful not to make a treaty with those who live in the land where you are going, or they will be a snare among you. Break down their altars, smash their sacred stones, and cut down their Asherah poles. Do not worship any other god, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. God is promising to give his people this land, this land from which the Messiah was going to come, this land promised long ago to Abraham. It's finally coming to fruition that this land is going to be in their possession. But he tells the people, They have to be careful. They have to look out for the temptations to be drawn away from the true God. And it says that God is jealous. Sometimes this can strike us as as kind of an odd thing that God can be jealous. 
but God put his name on us and he's jealous for us. He doesn't want us to belong to any other. He wants us in relationship with him. He loves us and pursues us and doesn't want us to be lost. And so he's jealous for us. Verse 15. Be careful not to make a treaty with those who live in the land. For when they prostitute themselves to their gods and sacrifice to them, they will invite you and you will eat their sacrifices. And when you choose some of their daughters as wives for your sons and those daughters prostitute themselves to their gods, they will lead your sons to do the same. Again, this warning of the potential of idolatry that the people living in the land at that time could be this snare to the incoming people of God. Do not make cast idols. Celebrate the feast of unleavened bread. For seven days eat bread made without yeast as I command you. Do this at the time appointed in the month of Abib, for in that month you came out of Egypt. Continually reminding the people of their rescue, how God's relationship with the people began with his reaching out to them, with his grace and his rescue, now inviting them into a covenant with himself. The first offspring of every womb belongs to me, including all the firstborn males of your livestock, whether from the herd or flock. Redeem the firstborn donkey with a lamb, but if you do not redeem it, break its neck. Redeem all your firstborn sons. No one is to appear before me empty-handed. Again, kind of setting up this system of sacrifice that takes place throughout the Old Testament, bringing forth a sacrifice without defect. Again, we see this imagery throughout the Old Testament, God rescuing his people from slavery, a sacrifice of atonement, all these different things pointing forward to the ultimate rescue that God has in his son Jesus, that Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, that atonement offering who presented himself for us on the cross. Six days you shall labor, but on the seventh day you shall rest. Even during the plowing season and harvest, you must rest. So even when things are getting busy, take that time to rest. Celebrate the feast of weeks with the first fruits of the wheat harvest and the feast of ingathering at the turn of the year. Three times a year, all your men are to appear before the sovereign Lord, the God of Israel. I will drive out the nations before you and enlarge your territory, and no one will covet your land when you go up three times each year to appear before the Lord your God. So God's saying, I'm going to keep the land safe. Even when you take time and energy away from the things you have to do, I will provide. I will be there for you. Do not offer the blood of a sacrifice to me along with anything containing yeast, and do not let any of the sacrifice from the Passover feast remain until morning. Bring the best of the first fruits of your soil to the house of the Lord your God. So this idea of bringing our best to God, not the second, but giving him what is first. Do not cook a young goat in its mother's milk. Then the Lord said to Moses, write down these words, for in accordance with these words, I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. Moses was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights without eating bread or drinking water. And he wrote on tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. And so those tablets which had been destroyed are now reshaped. When Moses came down from the Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the testimony in his hands, the Ten Commandments, he was not aware that his face was radiant because he had spoken with the Lord. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, his face was so radiant and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them. So Aaron and all the leaders of the community came back to him and he spoke to them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near him and he gave them all the commands the Lord had given him on Mount Sinai. When Moses finished speaking to them, he put a veil over his face. But whenever he entered the Lord's presence to speak with him, he removed the veil until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what had been commanded, they saw that his face was radiant. Then Moses would put the veil back over his face until he went in to speak with the Lord. You see, 
Moses puts this veil over his face to hide this glory because, again, he was in the presence of the holy God, something the people could not do. But we see this fulfillment in the New Testament where Jesus, through his sacrifice, he lifts this veil and we are able to be brought into the presence of God, a God who is compassionate, a God who is slow to anger, and a God who puts his name on you. And so as you go about this day, as you continue spending time with relatives and loved ones, I pray that God would remind you of that true hope that we have, that his name is on you, that you have been forgiven, that veil is lifted, and you are invited into the presence of God. And you can share that with all around you, bringing them with you as well to a loving and gracious Father all through Jesus. Have a blessed day.